Good morning, Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. Paul's as we come together as church to sing, to pray, and to listen. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus warns us of the consequences of taking up our cross to follow him out into the world. You are invited to follow the bulletin, which is available on our website, stpaulsardmore.com slash virtual church. Everything you need to fully participate is there, and also you may find a link for our Sunday School lessons. Last Monday, a survey was sent to the congregation to assist in our planning to, for the reopening of St. Paul's. If you have not responded, please do so by this coming Wednesday, June 24th. Next Sunday, June 28th, we will begin discussion of Pastor Lenny Duncan's book, Dear Church, a love letter from a black preacher to the whitest denomination in the US. We will be gathering at 1115 after our Zoom coffee hour. If you are interested in joining the conversation, please let Linda McNabb or me know. We are grateful for your continued generosity in sharing your financial resources during this time. Know that through you, the world is a better place. There is a link in the website on how to give electronic, electronically. We begin today with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. God of life and death, we confess the many ways we must die in order to fully live. We must die to the preoccupation with ourselves we must die to the notion that we are the center of our universe. We must surrender the false security of wealth, status, and success. God of life and death, by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we lose our life in order that we can truly live. People of God, here is the good news for you today. Christ is the Son of the living God, who takes away the sin of the world. 
In Christ, sin is forgiven. In Christ, we are giving, given a new identity. In Christ, we stand together against the tides of pride, hate, and injustice. In Christ, we are a new creation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can deny ourselves, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. Praise God. is in Christ Jesus our Lord and the life of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us to turn away from our own selfish interests, to take up our cross and to follow after you, to find our lives by giving them up to your greater purpose. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, move within us and among us. Open our eyes to your presence. Open our ears to your call, our hearts to one another. Send us into the world to live and to work as your faithful disciples. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too we might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone Therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Lord. You may be I just said you may be seated. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you have called us to go in peace, to love and serve you no matter where we are, no matter life's circumstances. When we find ourselves in challenging times, fill us with your compassion and give us the wisdom, strength, and creativity to share your love with anyone we can in any way we can. Amen. Amen. One of the things I did in this recent stay at home order was to throw away stuff. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to tackle the contents of a file cabinet in my home office. Now, to be honest, I could have simply thrown the entire contents straight into the recycling bin, but I didn't. You know, there might be something there I might need someday. I suspect some of you can relate. Now, one of the folders I came across was entitled Instruction Manuals. Inside, I found how-to instructions on such things as a Panasonic cassette player, an easy yo yogurt maker, a Nokia, a Nokia cell phone, 
a VCR player, a bread maker, a Mr. Coffee, and a dial-up modem. As I was writing this sermon, I got thinking that our gospel reading for today is Jesus' How to Be a Disciple Manual, or the Jesus Mission Possible Manual. When Jesus initially called the disciples, it was a simple invitation, come, come and follow me. These men had no education, no social status to boast of, no particular experience or characteristics that would predict their success. Initially, they sat at his feet. They learned from him. They watched him perform miracles. And as they went with him into the towns and villages, they began to understand what Jesus' ministry was all about. But beginning in chapter 10 of Matthew's Gospel, something radically changes. The disciples moved from being those who watched what Jesus was doing to those being sent forth into the world on Jesus' mission possible. As we heard in last week's Gospel, they're the ones who are to declare that God's kingdom is here and now. They're the ones who show that kingdom by healing the sick and raising the dead and touching the untouchables and kicking out demons. So in our gospel for today, Jesus continues his how to be a disciple instructions by leveling with the disciples about some of the challenges they will face. Challenges about rejection and slander and persecution and even death. Know that you'll get the same treatment that I get, he says. So don't be intimidated or bluffed into silence by the threat of bullies. There's nothing they can do to your soul, to your core being. And then he ends with these words, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Now in Jesus' day a cross, it was, well, simply a symbol of execution, and it had no religious meaning. Crosses often were lined the road to Jerusalem, scaring everyone and reinforcing the idea that such a death was the most awful thing in the world and to be avoided at all costs. Crucifixion became an effective form of punishment and of intimidation. So by telling his disciples to pick up their crosses, Jesus defied that idea. He suggested that there were worse things in the world than death, and that was living in fear was one of them. If they were going to let fear run their lives, then fear would be their God. And when their days on earth came to an end, they would discover that they had never really, truly lived. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. Follow me into new life. You and I are called in the waters of baptism to be God's presence in the world, to be who we say we are as God's people for the sake of the world God loves. In our opening hymn, we sang, lift high the cross. The cross is about one thing, love. Jesus loving us, taking upon himself all the suffering of the world, and in his death, redeeming us all. Jesus forgiving us, loving us, forgiving our failures, our messes, and in the joy of the resurrection, blessing us with peace and new life. So what does following Jesus into new life look like? Paul writes about it in his letter to Romans. And he writes, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. 
Be patient in suffering. Extend hospitality to strangers. Associate with the lowly. Bless those who persecute you. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Feed the hungry. Live peaceably with all. The deep secret of Jesus' hard words, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it, is that the way to have abundant life is not to save it, but to spend it, to give it away. Because life cannot be shut up any and saved any more than fresh spring water can be put in a mason jar and kept in a kitchen cupboard. Oh, it will remain water, and if you ever open it up, you can probably still drink it, but it will have lost its essence, its life, which is to be poured out, to be moving, living water, rushing downstream, to share its wealth with, without ever looking back. So to follow Jesus, it means, you know, getting out of our own comfort zones. It means receiving our lives as gifts instead of guarding them as our own possessions. It means sharing the life we have been given instead of bottling it up for ourselves, living lives of compassion and forgiveness and love. We don't know where Jesus will lead us, or we don't know what we might encounter on the way. But what we do know is that we do not walk alone, but in the company of Jesus himself and those, all those who have walked this way before us. May God grant us courage and strength as we continue Jesus' mission possible, and as we continue to say yes to be his special agents, to be his presence in the world. In the prayer attri attributed to Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out to the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ is to go about doing good. And yours are the hands with which Christ is to bless all people now. Let it be so. Let it be so. Amen.
our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts that care, let us bring our hopes and our needs to our gracious God. Merciful God, call us into a deeper relationship to you so that we can be your special agents for the sake of the world. Help us to see with new eyes the injustices within our church and society. Call us to have a compassionate heart that respects and uplifts the humanity and dignity for every person. Open our ears to listen and learn from the pain of people of color. Open our mouths to speak up against injustice. Join us with others to work for racial equity and inclusion for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, rescue us from our wasteful ways, that we would learn to be caring stewards of all that you have made in the air, on the earth, and beneath the waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you breathe life into each one of us and all of creation, and you have declared it all good. We give thanks for the diversity of your creation, especially our siblings of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and expression. Guided by your Holy Spirit, may we continue to live as the beloved community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, wherever there is brokenness, bring healing. Bind up our wounds, teach us compassion, and dry our tears. Be with, especially with those whom we name in our hearts. Give them your comfort, your healing, and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. And comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you bless us with your guides and companions in the faith, as we give thanks for those who have died. Especially this day, we remember your servant, Dorothy Linderman. Increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, in those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Jesus has called us in the waters of baptism. Go into this world bearing the words of hope and healing. Reach out to others in compassion, for it is in Jesus' name that we are sent out into the world to serve. So go in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God.